Today I'm trying something new to see if I can do this kind of stream for the long term. My goal is to eventually interest people enough to try to join me in a game of Hearts of Wulin, whether for one shots or medium length campaigns, which might be three to five sessions or longer, depending on the group's interest. It is totally cool if you feel intimidated by the Chinese wuxia setting. I'm not an expert either in the genre. I really enjoy wuxia stories. Maybe there are some nostalgic components to it, but it is what it is for me. On days like this where I have a game scheduled, but no one is able to play with me, I figured I could just stream a little solo character creation. It can be like a practice for writing a story. My idea for today is to design three characters all in the aware playbook. We have master, scholar, and traveling shifu. The custom move for master is you are a paragon of calm and thoughtfulness. To stop a conflict with an NPC on a 10 plus row result, you cool tempers. On a 7 to 9, you have a moment to negotiate. You must offer the aggressor something they want or they will press their assault. Or if they rolled 6 or lower, you draw the ire of those NPCs onto you. And for a scholar, their custom move is when you successfully study based on history, research, or informants, you always gain an additional one hold. You gain plus one forward to act on this information. Their goal in a, any session would be to try to use the study move to their advantage. Because for study, there is an option if they roll well to add a detail to the story that may or may not change the game master's idea of where the story is going. And for the third character, Traveling Shifu, your travels have taught you telltale signs and markings, giving away faction members. At a glance, you can pick out what group or organization someone belongs to. When you attempt to pierce someone's disguise, roll. And here, saying roll just means they can roll any of the five stats that they have. Once we get into character creation, you will see the numbers being distributed here. That's like the modifier in the D&D game. You start with a base of two d6s and then you add the modifier on top of it as the total of your result on a hit you identify them and may ask a question as per the study move you take plus one ongoing for the scene while they maintain the disguise on a seven to nine they notice your attention on a miss you badly misidentify the target story games tend to be more interesting to the audience when the players roll either 7 to 9 or a miss. So the game encourages the characters to fail and for the drama to build up as opposed to everyone getting what they want all the time. So let me think about the first character. The custom move also is kind of like a description for this character. A kind of a peacekeeper. They're wise. They don't necessarily have to be the oldest person in the situation. So let me get some inspiration from tarot cards. I don't know too much about tarot reading, but I'm interested in being able to use it better as a randomizer. King of Pentacles. Maybe they are kind of a leader. Let's play on words here. A master of a house. Pentacles is related to money, wealth. Let's say this person is either the heir apparent of a merchant family or the existing head of the household using the star symbol. Let's say the Starlight Shipping Company. I know technically faction is about a martial arts faction in the Wuling, in the world of martial artists. That does not exclude business faction where the members all know how to fight. So let's just start with that idea and see what I can come up with on top of that. For someone in the business and as the head of household, they necessarily have to have some kind of a high street intelligence. Let me check the element descriptors. Let's decide their style element. Picking one of these five elements as their best element used for how they deal with things in general. 
as well as how they fight in a physical conflict. Earth can represent caution, focus, and presence. That's good if this person is a fairly down-to-earth kind of a figure. So Earth could work. Metal, control, calculating, reflection. This I would usually give to a character that's a business person because they have to do a lot of calculation in their heads about profits, about benefits, etc. Since this is a master archetype, I think Earth might work too. Water, the wisdom part could also work for a master's archetype. And wood, the patience part works, but the curiosity might not necessarily make sense for that. Let's go for Earth as their style element. I will click back to Earth after I'm done with the randomizing. So I want maybe Earth to either have the highest stat value or somehow justify that another element has a higher stat. Their playbook is aware, so if their awareness is low, it kind of doesn't make sense. Maybe they are not very creative. So let's move that negative one to fire instead and just let water be zero. Wood is patience, growth, and curiosity. Maybe I want water to be two and wood to be zero. Preferred weapon, because this is a business leader. So let's say steel abacus. None of the characters needs a weapon to fight. They can fight barehanded and their style could reflect that. For someone to operate an abacus efficiently, their fingers are very agile. Maybe something to do with pressure points. Let's do the random name generator and see if I can pick one that sounds good. So the first random name is Ouyang Shaolan. It's kind of long. Let me choose a different one. That's also a double syllable surname. Mu Yun. Not bad. Let me keep that for now. So let's try the second character. Draw a tarot card. For inspiration, Moon's a major arcana. What can we see in this picture? We see a face looking down and animals on the ground with two obelisks. We've got a lobster in the water, a road into the distance, a dog and a, either a wolf or a fox. I'm not sure. A scholar that studied well into the night? As a long-term goal, what kind of things do they study? Are they an astrologist? Astronomist? They study the celestial signs. Maybe they are like a diviner by faction. The dogs and wolves, they could be like a gang. In Chinese, it doesn't sound pride, but in English, it sounds pretty cool. The river fox gang, they roam the waterways. So they could get into conflict with Wu Rong Yun's faction, Starlight Shipping Company, and what kind of preferred weapon they would use. Maybe the sticks with the um, divination messages written on them that they could be carrying around to use when someone wants them to read them their fate or something. It doesn't have to be sticks, it could be tokens of some kind. So it's a projectile weapon, but thrown instead of using a mechanical device. I have a feeling this person is about wood, their patience. They have a long-term goal in mind, so they are willing to wait to achieve that. They are curious about fate and growth. You're always learning something new about the self or about the person that you're reading. So let's pick a few numbers. Does it make sense to have negative one for their water, for their awareness, wisdom, flexibility? Maybe they're not very flexible. <laughs> They will not sway from their path. But I'm thinking that they are not very calculating and that they will let go of their control because they believe in the heavens, right? So I think maybe it should be metal that's the lowest stat. Just put zero in water. Are they passionate? Maybe they're passionate about this goal that they're pursuing. They're cautious, are they focused? Yes, they're definitely focused, but that they're not very aware. That might be tricky to roleplay. I'll just leave the stat as it is for now. Fighting style may be something to do with the stars, I think. The wood stumps from the aerial point of view looks like the Big Dipper constellation. And the person 
trains their movements by walking between those stumps. Their best skills is to evade attacks. Just an idea for now. Rui, ah, I like that name. Rui means the things goes your way. <laughs> but for a diviner, it doesn't always work out like that. I want a different surname. Yeah, this works. Zhao Rui. Let's move to the third character. Let me go for a tarot card. Inspiration, 10 of pentacles. Again with the pentacles. And this card also shows dogs. A tall building in the background with an old person in front. Two younger people in the back and a child. My initial feeling is this person is part of a beggar clan. <laughs> Even though the pentacles might represent riches, maybe this person doesn't have the riches. In Jin Yong's wuxia novels, the beggar sect's leader has the dog beating stick as symbol of his authority in the sect. He's a people watcher. I don't know whether I want to make them fairly old or young. We'll see once the entanglements come up. They don't necessarily have to be the leader of the beggar sect. Their role in the beggar sect is a scout. They definitely need to have a lot of patience and curiosity. The game rules encourage that the playbook roles not to overlap, but it doesn't say anything about overlapping style elements. I think it's okay if there are more than one character using the same style element, but let's see if I can make it fit for another element. I don't think they're calculating kind of a character. One of the negative descriptors for water is isolated, which could make sense if they are often alone in their scouting missions. Let's go with water as their highest element stat. And let's try some distributions. More rounded than the other two characters. They might fail more because they don't have two for any of the stats. They also don't have negative ones. Maybe instead of being calculating, they're patient. I will move the one from metal to wood. They don't have the presence, but they have the focus. They're cautious. One in earth instead of in fire. I'm not sure about the fighting style yet. Okay, let's try for a name. Ang Jie. Jet Li's Jie. Let's try to figure out their entanglements. The most important part of the group character creation process. So the base game wants every character to have one general entanglement and one romantic entanglement. In my simplified one-shot games, I just ask people to pick one of the two. There are a ton of relationships in wuxia stories that are not about romance. Both brothers, old sisters, relationship between siblings can tell really powerful stories as well. Each entanglement involves two other characters. They might be a player character and an NPC or two player characters. Usually it's better if at least one of those other people is a player character because having the game master play two NPCs in that entanglement is quite tricky and it lessens the rapport between players when they don't feel invested in a relationship with another player character. Assuming that these players will try to at least engage with one other player character in their entanglements. I'll see if I can do two <laughs> for each of them. Maybe I want to leave this friend as an NPC and I will aid the troublemaker as Tang Jie. I don't know if Tang Jie, just because they're from the beggar sect, means they're a troublemaker. And I think the scholar Zhao Rui definitely isn't a troublemaker. <laughs> Not from the first impression. I don't know who the friend is yet. So and so openly pursues me, but to avoid a scandal, I've hidden my relationship with... I'm not sure yet. I want to say the hidden scandalous relationship is with Zhao Rui, because they are rival factions along the waterway. Let's try some entanglement options for the second character. My rival knows about the bad actions I did to the family of my friend. This could work for Mu Rongyun, but if... Zhao Rui thinks of Mu Rongyun as just a friend and not something more, then this first romantic entanglement sentence might not work. It would be a one-sided romance. Let's try it, my friend Yun. This will be an NPC in the Starlight Shipping Company. Their romantic entanglements right now is I have been promised to the awful someone, but I find their friend much more interesting. 
this would come into conflict with their general entanglement so maybe not let me try a different one i love so and so but their sibling considers me beneath them if i exclude a romantic relationship between Zhao Rui and Mu Rongyun means that there must be a romantic entanglement with Tang Jie. For some reason, I really want Mu Rongyun and Zhao Rui to be together. <laughs> Rival faction thing is really my jam for dramatic storytelling. I have to come back to this group character creation for Hearts of Wuling. It always takes an hour, at least. My sibling and I were separated at birth and so and so raised them to destroy my clan. I kind of don't want Tangjie to have a sibling. This could be interesting, where Yun promised to aid the troublemaker, and Tangjie has to trust them to help them. And Tangjie would remain loyal to Yun. Hmm. Oh, it's the opposite. So friend Yun suspects of suspects someone in the beggars sect, maybe. Maybe his regional leader, Chao of Evil, but I remain steadfastly loyal. Let's try a romantic entanglement. Could Jie be both a friend and suitor for Yun? Let's say Rui. I love Rui, but their family member, cousin Qing, has sworn revenge against me for some reason. So here it does not say it's a reciprocal love, so it could be one sided. This is still. In conflict with the general entanglement. If I go for the romantic one, putting Yun in that place, Yun cannot be a friend as well. I don't know. Maybe it's also one sided. Your sister Ping considers me beneath them. My rival knows about the back actions, so let's say a friend could be Jie. Did something to their family that could have led to Jie becoming beggar. That's uncertain without having played into the story. So now both Yun and Rui are friends to Jie. Or maybe I should change this to Rui. They are going to be mutual friends. This is the most time consuming part. Once that whole web is figured out, the story moves pretty smoothly. So Ping hates both of these people. <laughs> oh my god, they both pursue Yun. This rival diviner of the Starlight Shipping Company has somehow figured out based on their reading that Rui had something to do with Jie's family tragedy in the past. I don't know what that is. All right, let's figure out the first character's entanglement. So both Rui and Jie is romantically interested in Yun. Jie openly pursues Yun to avoid a scandal. I've hidden my relationship with, with Rui. Oh my God, here it is. She has to show Jie friendliness because she has to be close enough to him to help him from time to time and so Jie could take advantage of that and try to get on her good side so who is this friend could it be Feng oh my gosh Feng knows that Jie needs help in case Rui does even more bad things to him <laughs> let me try to see if everything makes sense Starlight Shipping Company, I think it would be a righteous faction. A River Fox Gang is most likely an unrighteous faction. And Beggar Sect is ambiguous as to whether they're good or bad. They definitely help the beggars, mutual support group kind of a deal, but they can have their own biases of who they want to support. Yun promised her friend Feng, who is the diviner for the Starlight Shipping Company, that she would aid the troublemaker Tang Jie a member of the beggar's sect who is operating within the area. She's very polite and she is always doing favors for him, get him out of trouble from time to time. So Jie fell in love with her and openly pursues her. But Yun is actually in love with Rui. It's hidden because they are the rival factions. The righteous faction is not supposed to be on friendly terms with the unrighteous factions and vice versa. They're just arch nemeses at all times. Okay, so that scandal makes sense. Zhao Rui, her rival Feng, the diviner of the Starlight Shipping Company, knows about the bad actions that she did to the family of Tang Jie. The reason they're friends is probably because the gangs operate on a street level, so they have interactions with the beggars. Whether they are enemies or friends, at times, that depends on how the story plays out. Maybe at least for Rui, she is not a soldier level gang member. 
she does most of the divination for the faction to predict the auspicious times to go out for raids and such and know when not to cause any trouble so maybe she would have either read Pang Jie's fate for him if he asked whether he has a chance with Ying and she can't say anything because their relationship is supposed to be secret and in those scenes it will depend on how the players actually roleplay Rui's response to Tang Jie's request for a reading whether she's going to mislead him saying that no there's no chance that the two of you can get together or maybe she is full of integrity about her work she will tell the truth like this maybe she sees that the sign says Tang Jie and Mu Rongying will be together as opposed to two of them she might have to roll inner conflict <laughs> about that outcome who knows what the fate will end up but as a game master I can see that I will say the sign says Tang Jie and Mu Rongying will be together that's a cool scene I can foresee in my head Zhao Rui loves Yun but Yun's sister Ping considers the sister would not know that they're in love it's just that their sister definitely thinks Rui is beneath them Rui is from a unrighteous faction just by that categorization alone already condemned her to be unworthy it doesn't contradict the previous entanglements too much and the last character Tang Jie he serves as a scout for his sect and his friend Rui suspects Chao the beggar sect's regional leader in the area of evil but Tang Jie of course remains steadfastly loyal Rui is from an unrighteous faction does not mean that she stands for evil at all times and there are different degrees of evil which is open to interpretation based on what happens in the story Tang Jie loves Yun because of the favors and kindness that she had shown him but their sister Ping has sworn revenge against me now that I look at this maybe I can switch this entanglement to Ruiz because a beggar the sister would definitely consider them beneath them a wealthy family compared to a beggar she thinks that he is asking for money Feng definitely gonna be of equal scale to the PCs but Chao feels like could be a higher scale opponent Ping has sworn revenge against me it makes sense because they are the rival factions righteous versus unrighteous yeah I think that's it that is a group of characters that could make a pretty dramatic wuxia story